Hi, good morning. We're live with we're live and talking youth entrepreneurship with Kimberly Winborn, the author of The Debt Detox. She's going to help us mold teen moguls. <laughs> we're going to we're going to get some business people out of this. Seriously, though, uh, we all see on the news and such these wonderful stories of young people doing well, selling products and services. And we wonder how they got there or we're curious about what to do when our kids come to us and ask us questions and have business ideas. Where do we take them? How do we encourage them and support them? Whether the idea is something that seems feasible or even a wacky idea. How do we support them? <laughs> um, so what we're going to do is we'll talk to Kimberly. I'm going to ask Kimberly to tell us a little bit about herself and how she got involved in this. And we'll take it from there. We'll also be taking your questions live. So if you have any questions or comments, just post them in the comment section and Kimberly will answer them while we're on live. Awesome. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Thank you for the invitation. Thank uh, you. Was just for those who are watching and saw me with my head down, I was sharing to my pages because we want to make sure that my network, I always think that it's important to collaborate and share networks. And so I wanted to highlight uh, this network uh, by sharing this to my page. So please forgive me for having my head down. <laughs> but I'm excited to be here. Uh, I love, love, love the topic. Teen moguls, youth entrepreneurship. I've been an entrepreneur for 20 years. And in that process, I've learned a lot. And my background is English communications. And my mom was in early childhood education. And so what I discovered in my journey is that I really love pouring back into the youth, really loved encouraging and inspiring the youth to also have a voice like Stephen Covey's Eighth Habit, find your voice. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times they do that through expressing themselves through their hobbies and things like that. And I was like, well, you know that that could be a business. And my generation, we weren't we weren't encouraged to have a business as a young person, as a little person. Uh, hobbies, absolutely. Yeah, go play, go, go read, go whatever, go climb that tree. But we weren't necessarily encouraged to create this into a business. And um, so for me, I was like, it, it truly is important to inspire that in the youth and to show them that there are youth out there who are entrepreneurs. Um, so I am a financial consultant. Uh, fin I call myself a win strategist because uh, I love strategy. I love starting with goals when I work with my clients. So from a goal perspective, then I can help them to grow and build and cultivate the life that they want and desire financially. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's what I do. I'm a certified financial education instructor. That's the whole CFEI. When people see my uh, bio, the certified financial education instructor. And so I've created courses and curriculum around finance, hence the debt detox, which was a program first. And then I made that into a book so I could get the word out to more people than I would actually meet. Um, and so that's a little bit about me. I have a podcast and TV show called Coffee and Collaborations Media. Uh, both are under that Love and Flow TV and the Ultimate Fan Podcast. And then I have another uh, show with another host named Al the Great. And that's called Thank God is Fashion Friday. And you know what? I don't think I told you this, Kamara, but he has a program called Young Moguls. Young, yeah. Young Mogul University, I want to say. YMU. Yeah, he started that a few years back. So I was able to work with him and come and speak on finance and entrepreneurship at a workshop when we were open and COVID hadn't infiltrated our lives. Um, so yeah, so he has a show called Thank God is Fashion Friday. Wonderful, wonderful. Why don't we start with define youth entrepreneurship for us? You made a good point. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between a hobby and a business. Do yes. you want to define that for us? Absolutely. It's taking the next step. And a lot of times our parents don't know how to lead us uh, because maybe they're not entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they are. And so I have a lot of friends, business friends who are who are parents with uh, children who aspire to do things. Maybe they're artsy or they write or what have you. And all they do is take that next step. That's what youth entrepreneurship is to me. Entrepreneurship, by definition, is taking a risk. 
in mm -hmm. order to, yeah, in order to uh, mold and shape a career path. And it, it's not everything in life, really, though, if you think about it, is some level of a risk. So yeah. whether you're an entrepreneur in, in actuality or you have an entrepreneur's mindset, some people have an entrepreneur's mindset, but they work a nine to five. So mm -hmm. taking that uh, that idea, that risk factor, that next step is what I describe as youth entrepreneurship, but it's just a different age group. It's taking your hobbies, your gifts, and your talents and monetizing them. So okay. now you have money that you can save. Now you have money that you can go and buy the a few things that you may not be able to, or your parents may say, no, we don't have the money, but you can do things for yourself. And then also you can give back to the community. It's an opportunity to pour back into your household. So mm -hmm. that I know a lot of youth entrepreneurs that started their business just because they wanted to help their parents and help their household uh, to have a little bit more money. And so that's what youth entrepreneurship is to me. It's taking that idea, that innovation, that gift or that talent and going to the next step with it. And what are the benefits to teens and families if we work together with this? So the, so many benefits. You know, you think about the family itself. Statistically speaking, you bring in about four to five hundred extra dollars a month. That's an opportunity for debt freedom, an mm -hmm. opportunity for financial freedom. So if you have a family that's working together, um, I, I have an example of a family that I love. I don't I've worked with them on some of my youth entrepreneurship programming where I highlight youth entrepreneurs and expos and just that family working together, the kids having a business. One of the businesses took off more than the mother's business. And so now they're out working that business, the young person's business. I believe she started it at maybe 14 or 13. And I think she's 17 or 18 now. And that business took off. And so you never know that idea being open as a family to the idea that this could be the thing that really propels us to the next level. So so there you have it. Now I, they can give back to the community and that's what they do. So not only does it help the family, it also helps the community at large. It could help your own personal community, like in your neighborhood. Um, so many different things that can be established and supported as a result of that family who has that heart of service or that heart of leadership or uh, just passion for doing more to be able to pour back into the community. And then long term, uh, to wrap that up, long term, being able to have more for savings, emer that emergency fund, college, things like that. The parent can now take the money that they might pour into the college plan, uh, use the money from the youth, put it into some sort of a compounding interest product, stocks, different things like that, grow their wealth. And now they can take their money and put it towards retirement. So now you're talking about living the life that you deserve and always wanted because you're working as a family to have a financial fortress over your house. Now you've hooked us. Everybody's thinking, okay, 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 this is a great idea. What, uh, trends, do you <laughs> what trends do you see in teen entrepreneurs? What kind of things are they doing um, yeah. different than previous generations? This generation has the internet, previous generations didn't yeah. have the way it is now. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know what? That's one of the things that I want to inspire parents to encourage their children to use the internet appropriately. So yes, they can spend all day on the couch, laying around, YouTubing, watching all these silly challenges and things like that. Or what if they want to do that sort of a thing and create a YouTube page? Now we gotta be safe and secure. So it's gotta be something that we feel comfortable with. Mm -hmm. But even YouTube is an opportunity for monetization. So if you have a kid that loves YouTube, cultivate that, encourage that. Don't say, you know, because they're going to they're going to sneak and do stuff. Now, you you know, we've all been kids. Come on. <laughs> we've all been kids. When your parent says don't do something after at first, you may not. Right. And then after a while, you kind of sneak and start doing stuff. Um, not me. I was perfect. No, I'm joking, right? <laughs> but no. So you want to encourage the things that they're doing on their own. So the Internet with YouTube, with Snapchat, TikTok, all these different things 
free opportunities to uh, promote their businesses, then you want to use those as tools to help further uh, give that child that confidence and motivation uh, to do these things. I believe it's a great incentive mm -hmm. as well, like to say, hey, work on your business 20, 30 minutes a day. And then as a result of that, not only will you see a return on the investment of your time because people will see what you're doing, but then also on this side over here, as a family, we'll do something for you, whatever their favorite thing is. So yeah. maybe you work on your business 20 minutes a day for three days out of the week. At the end of the week, we can do go do something fun that you really like to do. So I think take the technology and use it to the to the advantage of the business use it to the advantage of the family instead of them just kind of twiddling their thumbs laying around watching somebody else make money <laughs> off of youtube yeah. and these things yeah I have a question i'm gonna post our question here we have a question okay. from stephanie okay. are there good apps for saving investing small amounts teen amounts of money that you know once they've earned it or if they're saving to to start a business yeah, I think there are so many apps out here now that um, I don't necessarily recommend one over another. Um, I do love the credit unions, uh, which allow the teen to have a credit account, uh, cre uh, not a credit account, a banking account, a checking account um, where they can. This is how I I advise people to keep their keep the finances separate, even for your youth. Mm -hmm. And so to set up an account with your local credit union so that that can be the business account, because where else are they making money? You know, and then now that can trans 16 and uh, can have their own stuff, their own accounts. Um, yes, we do use it. Yeah. So I think go to the credit union. Uh, once you start that business, go ahead. Like state employees credit union has something called a fat cat. Mm -hmm. And so for my daughter and I, whenever she makes money from her business, we put that into her fat cat. We have a checking for her and a saving. So that's what I recommend uh, to work with your banker. I recommend that for across the board, adults and young people really sit down and work with your banker and see what programs they have. Now, as far as like so many growth apps for teens, a lot of times you have to start them. You have to start them as the parent because they have. you have to, you know, security issues has to be a specific age. But you can actually compound the interest on the growth of their, you can compound the interest on the money that they've earned. So apps like Doe, which I think is a black owned app, but uh, D-O-U-G-H, uh, which will help them to understand investments, especially into the marketplace and all that stuff. You can set that account up for them. Um, I set it up for my daughter. And so I could go like, for instance, she was loving Roblox when uh, they went public, I could go and buy some stock in Roblox. And now I can grow my child's money in her investment. So I could take some of the money that she's made and use that app in order to grow some of that money and then also teach her about investing and all of that. So, it, you know, we, it's across the board, I guess, to answer that question completely with apps, it's across the board, depending on what you want to do with your child's money, whether you want to invest it, do you want to just save only? Um, I would say use a bank and then just look into apps that, you know, you really feel like work for you because there are, there are just so many. <laughs> there are just so many now. I'm going to, um, to, to, to piggyback off of Stephanie's question, um, do we consider, so we saw a few months ago, there was a big teen craze with investing and mm -hmm. you know, they invested in, I think, GameStop. And we saw how yeah. they, they got to see how they could manipulate the market yeah. uh, in a group en uh, masse. Do we consider that entrepreneurship if there, um, there's no product or service that they're offering? Do we consider investing as entrepreneurship? Yes. Yes, if that is the way that you're growing it, because I do have business partners, business friends that that's what they do as a career. I have a friend who completely stopped his uh, photography business and uh, videography and focused on trading. So, yeah, it, it can be a business for that teen who really is interested in the market, wants to learn that. But I would say really take the time to get with a professional so that they can really truly understand how all of the things works with the candles, you know, and all of that. 
with the uh the the trends so for instance with gamestop a lot of people when they uh, went public they immediately started buying and a lot of investors will tell you don't buy right away because the it's going to drop and so it's going to be a little bit at its highest when it first opens so wait a little bit and then buy so those are strategies that if you get with a professional they can help your young person to create that into a business and build wealth. Absolutely. You hear the people where their kids love, uh, I saw a story years ago and I use it in my workshops where a young man, he loved Nike and his mom taught him let's buy stock in Nike instead mm -hmm. of going out and spending $300 on some Nike air. Mm -hmm. Let's put some stock, $50 of stock into that. And then you get a return of that investment from the company that you love, right? from the company that you love. And then now he's getting as a result of being a great stockholder, they give him gifts. He gets oh, Nike yeah. for free. Yeah. That's, that's wonderful. I like that. <laughs> that's a good, now that's a really good tip. Um, another tip you gave us was to connect your team with professionals in their area of interest. Yes. How are other ways that we can inspire support, our teens, encourage them if they are, if they already have ideas. Yeah. Or, I, mm -hmm. If they have ideas, um, I well, definitely, if they don't, if we want to inspire them and, and lead them in this direction and see if it, if anything comes of it. Yeah. So I think this day and age, a lot of times as parents, we want to be the friend a lot. And so when our teen or our child says, no, I don't want to do this or no, I don't want to do that. We kind of say, well, oh, they don't like it. So let's not do that. But I believe that in the things that we don't like is where we find the most valuable lessons sometimes. And so I wouldn't say drag them, you know, to all these different places where they could go, but encourage them through service. So I believe that service helps us to find our path. Um, so I remember as a young as a young person, my mom taking us to feed the homeless or taking us to sing carols at Christmas at the uh, elderly centers. And leading into it, I hated it. It was like, why do I have to do this? You know, my friends aren't, you know, they say, my friends aren't doing this. But as a result of that, it changed my lens. Mm -hmm. It changed my lens for service. It changed my lens for the elderly community. I gained a, a new respect, and I, which made me, I learned so much, gained so much wisdom at such a young age. So I believe what parents should do is take your kids out to places that they may be, I don't wanna do this, I don't wanna do that because it's in service, but teach them to serve. Because so for that kid that doesn't know, well, what will I do for a business? Teach them to serve and through that, they'll begin to find themselves. Then if there's one that already has a business in mind, that already loves something like baking, then I would say just encourage that, bake with them. A lot of times when they do it themselves, then they give up. Um, it's not as fun as when you have your sister, your brother, your mom, your dad doing it with you. Maybe invite their friends over to help sometimes, you know, to help them run their little business. I know my daughter, she loved that because we started her business at the age of seven and having her friends to come over and help maybe decorate the cookies or even at the event, if it wasn't her friends, it could have been a parent or uh, somebody that bought a cookie from her. She would have a little station where she could go and show them how to put a, a heart or a Christmas tree or whatever the season was mm -hmm. on the cookie. And that helped excite her. She may not, so she's sort of an introvert, but it excited her to show those people how to do that. So it pulled her out of that that uh, introvert state because that's something that she loves. So I would say really pay attention to the things that they love and do it with them, but let them lead, let them be the boss, let them be the boss, but, but do it with them. And when you see that they're going down, like say they're putting, they're about to put too much salt. Don't say <laughs> in the cookie batch, right? Don't yell. Don't say no, 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 no. You know, say, Bay, I think let's go back and look, at the recipe to be sure we're doing this right. Mm -hmm. you know, encourage them in a way where it doesn't feel like they're being chastised, especially when you're in their kitchen, right? Because mm -hmm. you want them to feel like an entrepreneur. So let it be their kitchen for the time being. So those are a few tips I would give. We have to edify, edify our youth. 
we have to edify them. We have to encourage and cultivate what they have inside of them. And so sometimes we have to take a seat back in order to do that and allow them to lead, which helps them to find their voice, which is powerful. Okay. I'm just going to um, put up one comment. Okay. Um, because I want everybody to give applause for this. And it's also very inspirational. Stephanie tells us that one of her teens in college made enough money to buy a new car from that GameStop. She calls it a fiasco. I don't know if she was able to buy a car. Congratulations, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Yes, congratulations. That's so good. We have another comment from Susan. She says, teach them to serve. That will help them find themselves. She loves that. So thank yeah. you for that one. You're welcome. Um, were there any trends that you see um, on the horizon or things that are current trends with teens and, and business mm -hmm. plans they're having and things? Yeah, one of the things that a lot of teens are getting into is apparel. You know, like the t-shirts, the a lot of adults are too, but the apparel, because you can actually start your own a brand, your own apparel brand for free. Uh, Shopify will give you 14 days, I believe it is, for free to start your online store. And then there are other uh, there are other apps or other stores where you can pretty much go on, design your T-shirt, maybe with your logo or saying or what have you. And it goes straight from there to the consumer. So there is no you in the middle of it. All you have to do is set everything up and make sure it runs seamlessly. Mm -hmm. And now you're making money. I saw a story where a, a young woman uh, was doing this with her son, her teen. And he is bringing in $5,000 a month from his apparel business. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. So for those who have a child who is artsy, for instance, that maybe mm -hmm. loves to draw and they would like to see their items like on a mug or mm -hmm. on a notebook or on a T-shirt, a hat, whatever, mm -hmm. then that's a trend that's really happening right now because we're going to always shop. Right. And we, we buy different things over and over again how many people have way too many t-shirts yes. in their drawers right <laughs> so that's or mugs like i have a whole bunch of mugs i love mugs so if i could mm -hmm. if i got a personalized mug with some teens beautiful drawing i would love to buy that because i love mugs so that's a oh it looks like we lost her i'm hoping she'll come right back on um she was giving us some good advice and I was just getting ready to ask her to give us additional uh, resources. The Shopify resource is a wonderful one. Um, and I'm hoping that we can get her back on for the last couple of minutes. Um, we'll and see if we get some others, but we can review some of the stuff that she told us that we want to make sure that our teens lead, that these businesses are their ideas and the businesses can be born from any loves or talents. We may lead them there and say, you know, you do, you spend a lot of effort on X, Y, Z. Have you ever thought about a way to monetize it? Or I see that you like to watch people do X, Y, Z on YouTube and then you do it alone by yourself. How about if you do it on YouTube the way they do? Those are ways that we can lead them that would be wonderful. Um, what other stuff can we review? Kimberly has her book, um, Detox Debt, De The Debt Detox, The Debt Detox, um, which actually has a notebook and helps if your teen has already gotten into uh, any kind of credit card debt, or if you want to head off that, that's a good resource to have. She also works with, she has some teen entrepreneur programs that we're gonna talk, we were gonna talk about one with youth. So we'll put those in the chat. Um, and I, technology is wonderful, isn't it? I can't see, she can't seem to get back on. So oh, here she comes, wonderful, wonderful. Hi. Hi. <laughs> we, had, we had a service interruption. That's okay. Every, you know, after a year and a half of people being on Zoom and everything, everybody understands there is so much grace for that. We've all been on both lines of ends of that. So it's okay. Yeah, we had a, we had a, all of a sudden a service interruption and then it came back on. So that's okay. We just reviewed um, the information that you gave. And I was saying that you gave us that tip about Shopify for teens who are interested yeah. in the apparel business. Do you have any other tips for that if teens are, for teens who are interested in any other types of businesses? 
So other trends that are very popular. So baking is always a trend, like, but new things. Um, the one that I mentioned before where the business seems to be growing exponentially with the family and, mm -hmm. and the young lady's business is doing really well. They sell lemonade, but they have a specialty with their lemonade. And so food and beverage is always trending because new things are coming. You know, I see people that are popping up all the time with a new way of doing something, you know, with food trucks being big, uh, people tend to always support and love a new idea with food and beverage. So I would say that's kind of one of those things that's always trending. So if you have a youth that loves to cook, uh, maybe they have a focus or something that they really, tr that they, they, they is becomes their specialty. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things my daughter, she's been doing pound cakes and cookies for a while. And now we're going to get into popcorn. So she loves making popcorn for the family when we watch the movies. And so now she's going to start making popcorn as a part of her business. So I would say food and beverage is something that's always uh, trending. Mm -hmm. One of the th other things that's trending is, of course, gaming. Gaming is trending. Um, so for those who are interested in creating games, creating apps, digital resources, things like that. Those kids that truly love STEM, I would say get them into some sort of a STEM program that focuses on that sort of a thing, gaming, creating games, creating apps and programs. Because as you mentioned earlier, we're in a digital age and we're gonna continue down that path. So they can imprint, they can make an imprint themselves in that arena. So anything around STEM, especially the gaming and things like that, that the kids love. Um, my daughter, she, she's kind of into drawing a little and uh, the anime, mm -hmm. she's into those characters. Yeah. And so being able to create videos and things like that, she really loves that. That's her creative side. Mm -hmm. And so encouraging those things, anything digital, anything along those lines, I would say are things that are trending, but the apparel I want to, and somebody, if somebody else knows better, I love feedback, but that seems to be trending the most. Um, the apparel where, where kids are, are coming out with their own lines and really making great money for the family. We have a comment here as we wind down our time. We have a couple minutes left. We have okay. a comment from James. It says, don't wait for your kids dreams to happen. Work to yes. make them happen now. Absolutely. 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 I totally agree with that. I think it's important to, like I said earlier, to edify our children. They are, they are no longer, you know, I think when, when I grew up and I love my mom, no hate to any parent. I think we were to kind of like be seen and not heard sort of thing. It was, <laughs> it, it was kind of that thing. And that was just the, you know, the culture mm -hmm. of, of during that time. And then I think now, what we want to do is not create that space where the kid is just seen and not heard, but allow them to be heard, but in a, in a setting where they feel safe, in a setting where they feel like they can freely express themselves while so many kids are starting to go into shells. We don't want that. We want to encourage them to continue to openly express themselves in one form or fashion, even if they're they feel like they're an introvert, but they need an outlet and starting a business or having a hobby that grows into a business is a great outlet. So we need to edify them mm -hmm. and let them know that their voice does deserve to be heard and we're listening. And so we encourage those things that are inside of them uh, to come on out. I agree wholeheartedly. As we are winding down our time here, do you have a sample of a home activity or family activity that can mm -hmm. either encourage, inspire, or foster teen entrepreneurship? Absolutely. Um, so one of the things that we do in our wind shops, I call them wind shops because my whole thing is born to win, but um, is vision boarding. And I like to call it vision building. So I believe a family can sit down and build the vision for that teen, for the whole entire family, how their hobby can convert into a teen, a, a teen business, a youth entrepreneurship business, um, or youth into youth entrepreneurship. So I think vision building. So sitting down, getting your your scissors, your post poster board, your uh, crafts and things, just going right to the Dollar Tree and buying as many 
letters and getting a whole bunch of magazines and really building out the vision for your family together and focus on that team and their business. How much do you want to make? How much can you actually start? So starting there, what, where can you actually start financially and then take that number and grow that? Okay. So in two months or every quarter, we're going to this, we're going to that, we're going to do this or that. So that's an activity that I think a family can do together. You can do it more than once a year, do a vision building vision board, uh, together as a family and really construct the life that you want for you and your team's business. I love that the family vision board. And mm -hmm. then, um, to, to round this out, do, is there a place where parents can go or direct their teens to go that after they've come up, done the family visioning and they've come up with an idea that maybe a love of the teens love that the teen wants to monetize, is there a place for the teen to go to learn the next steps, really how to make a business plan and those types of steps? So there are a lot of organizations um, that start the process sometimes for them. Um, there's nobody, so we do that. So, you know, we cultivate the relationships for the youth. We mm -hmm. do workshops throughout the year. I partner with other organizations that work with youth to do that. And then we have a youth entrepreneurship expo every December. We didn't do it in 2020, but December 2018, 2019, we do a Christmas gala so they get to kind of get dressed up and we have the, the youth as the vendors and mm -hmm. then we also have it where they can display their talents because a lot of times these youth have these amazing talents but because they are not a part of the choir at school or in church or what have you or whatever that's just an example um they don't get to uh, display these talents and so i would recommend to contact us because we do that if you're in raleigh north carolina but then i can connect them to other organizations. There are so many just for girls sometimes, and some are inclusive to all where you focus on confidence, entrepreneurship, financial literacy, leadership, all of those things. My program um, for my nonprofit, which I haven't mentioned, but I do have a nonprofit, we focus on etiquette as well and all of those other things. So that's what I recommend getting with uh, the family first. And then contacting, if you're local, especially to Raleigh-Durham, contacting us, and uh, then I can connect them to some of the other resources that we have. I don't have worldly resources. Like, I don't have resources for every community, but I do for mine. Okay. Now, um, before we say goodbye to everyone this morning, give us a website or email address or a preferred contact way you offered for people to contact you. So I want to put it in the chat. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm at Kimberly Winborn LLC.com. Uh, it's my website, uh, Kimberly Winborn LLC.com. And from there, it connects to all of my social media. They can reach out to me here through Facebook, uh, through my DM. I also have a link that I'll share whenever somebody reaches out to me so they can schedule time, it's through Calendly. It's just calendly.com backslash Kimberly Winborn. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, those are the best ways to reach me. My email address is just Kimberly W at Kimberly .com. Like everything, I try to make it easy, even though Kimberly Winborn is a long name. <laughs> <laughs> I try to make it easy by making everything at Kimberly Winborn LLC on Facebook. Instagram, LinkedIn, all of those platforms is just at Kimberly Winborn LLC. This has been wonderful, Kimberly. Thank you so much. I know um, we're we're partially through the summer, but there's still a lot of time for families to encourage their teens to kick off their business interests. I know that we hear them all the time over dinner and stuff saying, I could do this, I could do that. And we should be saying, yes, you can. Yes, you can. And uh, one of the things I was able to do was a virtual workshop. We're going to do one in July. I'm in partnership with uh, WTEX and Business Consulting. We're doing a July workshop with the youth focusing on financial literacy and entrepreneurship. So I'm excited about that. So anybody that wants that information can reach out to me. Right now, we have it slated for July 17th for the first one. Mm -hmm. um, so we're doing the morning, 10 o'clock, not too, too early. 
But yeah, I would love to be able, for those who aren't local to Raleigh, North Carolina, they can jump on the virtual, which I've been doing that for about five years now. That's wonderful. That's a wonderful place to end. So if you are interested, your teen is interested, July 17th, virtual workshop, 10 o'clock Eastern time. Yes. In the chat, we have Kimberly's website and email address. You use those to contact her and she'll give you the information for that workshop. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget, Kimberly's book is The Debt Detox, also in the chat. Yes. Have a great day. Thank Goodbye. you so much. Bye-bye.